In today's video, I will show you how to program your own TPMS sensors on a BMW. This method should apply to many other cars as well. So three years ago, I installed these M437 wheels and summer tires on my BMW Z4, and I've loved how it elevated the look of this car. What I didn't realize at the time was that the BMW M4 TPMS sensors pre-installed on these wheels were not compatible with my older Z4. I've lived with the TPMS light on my dash for way too long now, so I'm getting these CG Solid TS01 sensors installed, and I will be using this CG Solid TPMS80 programming tool to program the sensors myself. Let's do it. Alright guys, so while the tire shop is installing my sensors, let's check out the tool I will be using. So this is the TPMS80. This is kind of new, uh, but it supports uh, the TS01 TPMS sensors. And actually, let's take a quick look at this as well. These are basically universal, so they have the 433 and 315 megahertz all in one. So two sensors in one, I guess, or two frequencies in one. Uh, and they're FCC certified and everything else. So it should basically cover like 98% of all the vehicles. I'm pretty impressed with what they're saying this can do. There's four different methods of programming. It has OBD2 functionality as well. And obviously a screen shows you how to program the sensors. And then it'll show you the measurements for the sensors as well. And then it can also do OBD2 reading, uh, read the universal TPMS data, and then you can activate and program that data into the TS01. Uh, you can diagnose other TPMS issues and even manually input OE IDs into TS01 sensors. Um, so yeah, it seems like there's a lot of functionality here. Uh, we'll check all of that out once we are working on the car. And here on the side, uh, just a little bit more information that does have a built-in battery. All right, so let's check it out. So here's the device itself. Clicky button, so that's nice. You feel when they've clicked them. You have your uh, mini USB cable on the side, so you can update the software. And you have the OBD2 connection here at the bottom. You have your data cable and, of course, the OBD2 cable as well. Just right there. And well, that's basically it other than the warranty card. So let's go pick up the wheels and tires, put them back on the car and get that stuff programmed to the vehicle. Should be fun. All right, so we're in my BMW Z4 and I've had the sensors installed in all four wheels now. And let's take a quick look at the menu here on the scanner and see what we can actually do. So there is the quick mode, then you also have the advanced mode, so you can go more into the options and use all four different ways of programming the sensor. And it even has OBD2 scanner functionality, so that will help you reset the TPMS codes and you know read standard engine and transmission uh, codes and things like that as well. You can also go into the latest test and see what the results were uh, of that test and the review data. And of course, you can check out the information about the device as well as updated and change some of the settings. So you can change the market, the language, how the sensor ID shows up, what the units are, and you know, turn off the beep, which I have already done. Anyway, let's go back to the advanced mode, go in, and then I'll show you the four different ways that this scanner can program sensors. We're going to select BMW, then it's going to be Z4. This is BMW Z4. And this is a 2012 car, so we're going to select 2010 to 2014 since uh, the sensors are programmed differently on different cars, and that's why I couldn't use the M4 sensors on this car. So we're going to go in here, and we have a few options in here as well. So we have TPMS Diagnose. So if you go in here, yeah, we're going to delete the data from the previous time I tried. And what we can do here is actually go to each of the original sensors and scan it. So if you have the original sensors, this is the first way you can do the programming. You can go to each of the previous sensors and then scan it. You'll get the sensor ID, which will be saved in the device. And then you can program that to the new sensors. This is great if you have original sensors and you are getting rid of those sensors. So if they're old, the battery is dying, things like that, that's what you would use. Now, 
This does not require OBD2 connectivity, which is great for those cars that may not even support that. So yeah, that's a good way to get your sensors replaced. Now, what happens if your sensors have died and you cannot actually uh, you know, read them with the scanner. So the battery is completely dead or they got destroyed or something like that. Well, what you can do is go to program sensors and you can copy that information from your vehicle. So you would go to copy by OBD. And what this will do is actually go into the module that's responsible for the TPMS sensors and get that information. So previously stored sensors that were working in your car. So if you go in there and then let me turn on the ignition on this car. So with the ignition turned on, we can hit yes. And then the, the scanner will actually scan the car and get the sensor information. So as you can see, it's reading the sensor ID and we just got all of the sensor IDs that were previously stored on the car. This is basically the same way as you would be going to each wheel and scanning the previous sensors, but it does it for you automatically. Pretty cool, and then you can just hit Y to copy and program your new sensors. Now, the third way is to actually do a manual input. So the manual input is you literally go in, you type in the sensor ID of the sensor, uh, of the old sensor, and then that will be programmed into the new sensors. Where would you use this? Well, if your sensors are completely dead and your vehicle does not provide sensor IDs over OBD2 port, what you can do is just look at the actual physical sensor and read out the ID on it and then program that to the new sensor. And finally, you can use the auto create function, which is what I will be using. This function can program up to 16 sensors at the same time. You will have to use the relearn function for the car to recognize them since they will have, you know, brand new sensor IDs. It's Perfect for my situation since I want to keep the original sensors in my winter wheels and tire set and program new sensors I installed in the summer wheels and tires. This way there will be no issues when I park the car in the garage next to uh, the original wheels and tires with the sensors in them and there will be no duplicate sensors for the car to get confused over. Uh, so this is a good way to program new sensors and keep your old sensors in different set of wheels which is what I will be doing. So I'm gonna go to auto create, I'm gonna hit yes. And now what I have to do is bring this device to the sensors that I have installed in the wheels. Preferably you would do this with uh, the sensors not installed in the wheels first, but I've already had mine installed. So what I'm just gonna do is deflate the tires to under 10 PSI, just like this. See right now it says it cannot find the sensor since obviously I'm not next to the sensor, but yeah. I'm gonna deflate them to 10 PSI and then go to each sensor, scan them, and uh, this device will automatically create the sensor IDs for all of them. And then I will program those IDs into the car. I know it's very hard to see, but what I'm just gonna do is press this button on this uh, air motor that I've reviewed before and let it deflate. All right, I'm at nine, so that should be perfect. With all of the tires deflated to under 10 PSI, now I can scan the sensors. So I'm just gonna put it right there next to the sensor. Okay, and right away it says one sensor detected. I'm gonna click yes, continue. It's gonna program that one sensor, so I'm gonna keep it close to the sensor. Okay, and that's done. So we see we have the new sensor ID just right there. Perfect. I'm gonna click OK. And we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing on all four. All right, now we're at our second wheel. So we're gonna do the same thing. Keep it by the sensor. There it is, sensor has been detected, hit yes. It's gonna program it, give it a new sensor ID. Okay, perfect. Now we have the sensor ID for this one. Click OK, go to the next one. And done. Now I'm going to go around the car one more time and do the TPMS diagnose. So we're gonna go to each sensor and we're gonna tell the car where each sensor is. So we are at the driver's side front. So I'm gonna hit scan. Right there, so it found the sensor, it's 8.6 or 8.7. We're gonna go to the other wheel, just there. Done, 8.7 again. 
Shows the temperature also, pretty cool. Perfect, 9.1. And last one. There you go, all four sensors are there. Now we're gonna connect to OBD and turn the ignition on to program them. All right, so ignition is on. I'm gonna plug in the sensor into the OBD2 port, just like that, and then I'm gonna click continue. All right, so it's gonna communicate with the vehicle and hopefully program the sensors to the car. Let's see, we're gonna just follow the prompts now. Okay, click okay. All right, so as you can see, it's able to read the sensors on the car now. It's showing us what each one is. We're gonna view the codes for it and then hopefully we can erase them and then go for a drive and that should be it. Well, after we inflate the tires, of course, to proper uh, PSI. All right, so we can see that we're going to erase all of them. So I'm just going to hit yes, erase, yes, erase all of them. Okay, cool. All four tires are now inflated to the correct pressure. So we can go for a quick drive. So I knew you guys were going to complain that my car is dirty. So I'm getting it cleaned, but it only took me about five minutes of driving and the light went off. We're all good. How cool is that? Love it. Such a simple process and it worked really well. And just as additional proof, I scanned the car and as you can see, we can see all four of those sensor IDs that we activated just earlier. In conclusion, this tool is very feature rich and can do a few other things. If you'd like to see a full review with details of each function, let me know down below. Last thing I wanted to mention is that the sensors can be programmed multiple times, which is pretty cool. And now that you know how to program your own TPMS sensors, why not check out how I transformed this BMW Z4 from a junker to my dream car.